OMG, how does she do it? Hands-free live looping, let's go. If, like me, you're one of the 20 million people that have watched this video, then you're probably totally inspired by Elise Tro. This video will break down a couple of key moments from Elise's top video and show you how to do that in Ableton. Let's just take a second to watch the process. I've picked out a drum loop from the middle of the video. Let's check this out. Dream of what you want to. I mean, that is just totally seamless. So the most important thing to realize is that this technique relies on the software called Ableton Live. So if you haven't got it and you want to do this, you're going to need to get it. So what is actually happening? So you may well already know that you can map MIDI buttons to certain functions in Ableton. So for example, you can set the lowest C note on your keyboard to trigger the main button on the looper effect within Ableton. This is basically what's happening for all of the loops that Elise is capturing in this video. This MIDI triggering is the key to getting yourself set up deeper inside MIDI triggering. Right before she starts playing, a MIDI note is used to trigger the looper to start recording. Let's just say Elise has set this to C1. And just before the end of the loop, another MIDI note, let's say C sharp one, triggers the play button on the looper. Thus, when Elise reaches the end of the phrase she's playing, the loop continues to play. So far, so good and probably not too dissimilar from what you might be used to if you've used Ableton and MIDI triggering already. But let's look at the magic. In Ableton Live, Elise has set up a MIDI track that plays MIDI notes. This track is a pre-recorded MIDI track, which is used to play all of the notes, which are then going to trigger the actions in Ableton that Elise needs to perform her song. Going back to the original example, this track would play a C1 and then a C sharp one to create the loop as we just saw. And here is the power. Elise can use this to be as simple or as complex as she likes. She can trigger tracks to stop, start, record, overdub, redo, undo, as she likes, exactly when she likes. And unfortunately, this MIDI triggering that I just explained isn't set up automatically in Ableton to work. I need more software, not necessarily. If you have a Mac to run Ableton, you can use the IAC driver, which I'll show you how to set up. If you're a Windows user, unfortunately, it doesn't have an IAC driver, so you will need to purchase some third-party software. There are a number of options out there, but I really like the Bohm MIDI translator. Enable the IAC driver, Mac only. The IAC driver isn't always switched on in a new Mac, and you're gonna need to switch it on. I'll show you how to do that now. You can see here on the left of my screen, there's the IAC driver here, so double-click on it. And can you see here it says device is online. That needs to be switched to on. Next, we need to go into the Ableton preferences to make sure that it can receive and transmit. So you go into Ableton, bring up the settings. And what you need to do is you need to go to your link tempo MIDI section. And if you can see down here in the MIDI ports here, you can see I've got the in IAC driver, click on track and remote, and the out IAC driver bus one, click on track and remote as well. Now I'm gonna show you how to set that up in a track in Ableton so it can receive and send correctly. So here it is, I've added a new track, MIDI from all instruments, all channels, Channels, monitor off and the MIDI needs to go to IAC driver and it's got to be channel 1 for some reason it's channel 1 only in this case which I don't really know why but just set it to channel 1 so if you haven't got the IAC driver you'll need to download and install Bohm software which you can see here next you'll need to go into your settings in Ableton and you'll need to click on in Bohm MIDI Translator 1 track and remote and out Bohm MIDI Translator 1 track and remote as well. In simple terms, Bohm will receive a MIDI note or a simple CC message from Ableton, process it and will send back to Ableton either a MIDI note, a CC message, a key command, so do the MIDI triggering I mentioned earlier. The basic build of a loop song. So once you've got IAC or Bohm set up, you're ready to do your hands-free live looping. Now the songs that Elise performs are complex musical arrangements and she needs to play the exact right musical phrase at the exact right time otherwise it sounds terrible it's something you're going to have to get your head around and really practice hard if you want to perfect this technique that being said we need to get your ableton set up so now we need to look at how to set up ableton so you can see here i've got two tracks the first blue one has the iac driver on it and is where the midi notes are held that do the triggering the second yellow track is a simple MIDI track with an upright piano sound loaded in. The track has the looper effect loaded onto it, which we will be triggering from that first MIDI trigger track. So as I mentioned earlier, I've mapped the C1 MIDI note to the record button on the looper and C sharp one to the play button.
position on the looper. Now let's go into the arrangement view and take a look at the MIDI notes that will be doing the triggering. So let's take a look at this MIDI clip here. You can see that I've programmed C1 in the first bar and C sharp one in the second bar. So when I play this clip, the following will happen. In bar one, the MIDI trigger track plays a C1 which tells the looper to start recording in bar two. As I said, the looper is recording what's being played. And then the MIDI trigger track now plays C sharp one. And this tells the looper to stop recording and play back the looper from the beginning of bar three. Let me show you this in action. Now I play the piano part. And you can hear that it's looping around. And you can look at the looper and see that it's in playback mode. And really, this is all that Elise is doing in her video. It is basically this simple, but hopefully you can see that it's been triggered by this track here in the arrangement view. So that's how you do it in simple terms. If you listen to Elise, you'll see that she plays drums, keys, guitar, bass. It's a way more complex arrangement. And there'll need to be a looper embedded as I've shown you on each of those tracks. All MIDI mapped to play, record, overdub, undo, redo, just like that. In fact, in my setup, I've got drums, keys, guitar, and singing, and each of those tracks has got three loopers embedded in it, and that enables me to have more than one section of the song, section A, section B, and sometimes even section C, but that obviously makes it way more complex. Bonus tip. IAC and BOEM are amazing, but there is actually more that you can do. I use BOEM to trigger multiple camera angles as I'm playing my music in time with the music. I also use it to show the lyrics of the song that I'm singing. Once you get your head around this hands-free approach, Approach, the sky really is the limit. Understanding Elise's technique is interesting, but there is so much more that you can learn from studying her as a musician. Watch this video with some actionable tips that you need to hear.